Remarks by members. The junior senator from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I really hadn't planned on this speech, but, um, but I think today's the day. It seems like uh, daily we've been hearing uh, dissertations about the perils and the terrible things that House Bill 4012 is going to do to our state. That this bill will allow bad things and even encourage them. And I hope anybody that knows me knows that I would never stand up to support anything where I think people are going to be mistreated. And I'm sorry to report to you, Mr. President, that the opponents of this bill have won the battle, I think, of misinformation with our constituents, with the media, and even with members of this body. I'm also aware that perception is reality unless one knows the truth. I'm learning uh, in my session and a half here that hyperbole and falsehoods accompany both sides of issues that are argued in this body and that the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. Today, my goal is to outline what I see as the facts of this issue and some things that this bill will do and will not do. First of all, House Bill 4012 does not allow people to do anything in the name of religion. It simply reestablishes a balancing test for resolving cases when state action conflicts with religious practices. And here are those here are those four tests. One, does a person have a sincerely held religious belief? Two, has it been substantially burdened by the government? Does government have a compelling interest to, sub to substantially burden that belief? And fourth, has government exhausted all other means to achieve its goals without infringing on that person's belief? Mr. President, Truthfully, I doubt that many people in this body have read this bill. This bill is modeled after the federal RIFRA law, which was passed overwhelmingly by Congress in 1993 and signed by President Clinton. It's necessary because the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 1997 that the federal RIFRA law does not apply to state cases. The same laws in place in four of five surrounding states in 19 of 21 states in our region, in 28 states totally, either by, by statute or by acts of the, their Supreme Courts. It's very similar to the 2015 Arkansas law, modeled after the federal law. It does not allow or incentivize discrimination in any way. It does not create any new cause of legal action. It's completely defensive in nature, Mr. President. It's a shield. It's not a sword nor a club. It does not apply to private sector employee-employer relations, only to situations where government has acted in some way. RIFRAs have never allowed domestic violence, child abuse, denial of services, or denial of medical treatment, not once in 50 years. It cannot be used to evade school immunization laws, as some have said. The Supreme Court ruled on this matter in Workman versus Mingo County Board of Education in 2011. Mr. President, religious freedom is a universal human right. It's an important American constitutional right that's worthy of protection under West Virginia law. It protects everyone equally. It does not pick winners and losers. It comes into play when there's a, a clash between two people's rights. It doesn't say one right will trump another one. It deserves a fair hearing in court. Now, honestly, I don't know who can be opposed to a fair hearing. There's lots of half-truths, falsehoods floating around. Uh, it, the one of them says the religious liberty legislation like this causes damage to our state economies. 21 states have adopted RIFRAs. According to statistics from the U.S. Department of Commerce, in the year following the passage of those laws, those states' domestic products grew by an average of 4.1 percent. Several states had GDP growth in excess of 6 percent. 
following enactment of those RIFRAs. Some say our tourism and entertainment industries will be particularly devastated by the passage of, of religious liberty legislation. Here's the fact. According to U.S. Department of Commerce data, in every state that's adopted RIFRAs, the GDP of the arts, entertainment, recreation, accommodation, and food service industries grew the year following RIFRAs enactment. And the biggest one we hear, uh, the state of Indianapolis was, lost $60 million last year after Indiana passed RIFRA. Here are the facts. Just days after the tourism board in Indiana made this claim, it announced that the city posted new records for convention sales, and some will say it's because they had the final four. But they also announced that they have secured an estimated $1 billion in future economic impact because of, of Indiana being a good place to go. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Disney and Florida are both in RIFRA areas. And Mr. President, I'm hesitant to point this out, but as I look around this room and as I listen to folks who've spoken vehemently against this bill, I notice that there are 18 people in this chamber who've either voted for or sponsored this legislation. And I would ask you, what's different this time? What's different? Well, some will say there's a Supreme Court ruling about marriage. Truth is, that law doesn't impact this one, and this one doesn't impact that one. I don't know what the difference is, but I would ask you, folks, let's stop putting our fingers up and, and feeling the political winds before we vote. Let's vote and do what we think is the right thing. It occurred to me before I joined this esteemed body, I was watching on TV one night on public television and I saw a member of this body who was speaking passionately um, about an issue and he said, we ought to leave our religion or our faith, I think he said, at the rear door when we enter this place. Mr. President, if that's a test for me, I can't do that. It's part of my fiber, my very being, it's part of my DNA. And I'm, I'm taught that we, we really ought to be doing two things. One, we ought to love God and love each other. I intend to do that. It also tells me that we are to be salt and light. And I pray that when I leave this place, there will be a little bit of salt around here and that this place will be just a little more well lit because I've been here. Mr. President, thank you for the indulgence.